Question 7 says a hollow spherical shell at outer radius r floats just submerged under the water surface. The inner radius of the shell is small r. If the specific gravity of the shell material is 27 by 8 with respect to water, the value of small r is. Clearly, the question is based on Archimedes principle and in this case, the weight of the shell is equal to the weight of water displaced by it and that means the mass of the shell equals mass of the water displaced by it. So, let us equate the mass of shell with mass of water displaced and that will give us the answer. So, what is the mass of the shell? Well, mass of the shell we can write it as 4 pi by 3 into capital R cube minus small r cube that is the volume where the material of the shell is. Okay? There is uh, air inside, so we can neglect the weight of air inside. So, this is the volume of the material of the shell multiplied by density of the shell and that density is 27 by 8 times density of water that means we can put it as this into 27 by 8 multiplied by density of water that is the mass of the shell and the mass of water displaced is equal to the volume defined by the outer radius of the shell that means 4 pi by 3 into capital R cube. So, we equate this to 4 pi by 3 into capital R cube into density of water, rho w stands for density of water. Well, solving this equation will give us the value of small r in terms of capital R. So, we can strike off 4 pi by 3 on both sides and of course, we can strike off rho w also on both sides. What we get is r 3 cube minus small r 3 cube into 27 by 8 is equal to capital R 3 cube or we can put it like this R cube minus small r cube into 27 in fact is equal to 8 times of capital R cube and uh, simplifying it further we get 27 small r cube is equal to 19 times capital R cube or the value of small r is then coming out as 19 by 27 to the power 1 by 3 multiplied by capital R. This is what we are getting and in fact 27 to the power 1 by 3 is 3 itself. So, if we evaluate this the value of small r comes out as close to 8 r by 9. So, that means for this particular question option 4 is the correct one. Let us go to the next question now. Question 8 says assume that the displacement s of air is proportional to the pressure difference delta p created by a sound wave. Displacement s further depends on the speed of sound v, density of air rho and the frequency f. If delta p is 10 Pascal, v is about 300 meter per second, rho is nearly 1 kg per cubic meter and the frequency is nearly 1000 hertz, then s will be of the order of and the four options are given. It specifically mentioned that take the multiplicative constant to be 1. Well, the question is related to propagation of sound wave, but in this particular case we have to employ the method of dimensions, the dimensional analysis to find the relation. So, according to the question s is directly proportional to delta p and it also depends on variables like the speed v, the density rho and the frequency f. Let us assume that the relation is something like this s the displacement of air and it clearly says that we have to take the multiplicative constant as 1. 
So, that means S can be taken as 1 into delta P and let us say that the power of V is X then power of rho is Y and finally, there is one more parameter and that is frequency power of frequency is Z. Of course, now by equating dimensions of the two sides, we can find the values of x, y and z. Let us write one more step. So, on the left hand side, we have m0, if you look at the dimensions l1 and t0 in terms of dimensions. On the right hand side, delta p of course, you know is for pressure. So, the dimensional formula for this is m l minus 1 t minus 2 force per unit area for velocity it is L t minus 1 and of course, we have to put the power of x and let us complete this for rho it is m L minus 3. So, that means we write here let us continue writing here. So, m L minus 3 to the power y of course, there is a multiplication sign here and finally, frequency has dimensions t minus 1. So, that means t minus 1 to the power z. So, there are 3 unknowns x, y and z. We will get 3 equations by equating the powers of m, l and t and the values of x, y and z can be solved. In fact, when you solve it the values of x, y and z each of these values comes out as minus 1. So, we are getting x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to minus 1 and also z is equal to minus 1. So, that means the final expression according to this question for s is coming out as you know s is equal to delta p divided by v into rho into f. Now, the values in uh, approximate terms are given. So, let us put those values for delta p, the value is 10 Pascal, for v it is 300 meter per second, rho is 1 kg per cubic meter and frequency is 1000 hertz. Now, if we substitute all these values, this is coming out as 1 by 30 millimeter. And uh, if you look at the options, if we multiply the numerator and the denominator with about 3, this is very close to 3 by 100 millimeter. So, we will take the first option as the correct option. The value of S is of the order of 3 by 100 millimeter. And let us now go to question number 9. Question 9 says two capacitors of capacitances C and 2 C are charged to potential differences V and 2 V respectively. These are then connected in parallel in such a manner that the positive terminal of one is connected to the negative terminal of the other. The final energy of this configuration is well clearly the question is from electrostatics and it is about sharing of charges and common potential when two charge capacitors are connected. The important point here is that the positive plate of one is connected to the negative plate of the other. So, the expression for the common potential in such a case we can write as you know V common is C 1 V 1 minus C 2 V 2 divided by the total capacitance which is C 1 plus C 2. Let us keep this as positive. So, let us take C 1 as 2 C and that means V 1 is 2 V. So, we have 2 C into 2 V that means 4 C V and C 2 is C and V 2 is V. So, 4 C V minus C V divided by the total capacitance which is 3 C. So, we find that the V C the common potential after the two capacitors are connected is coming out as V only. And so, the final energy is half total capacitance into common potential square that means the final energy stored in the capacitor is given as 1 by 2 into the total capacitance which is 3 C 
n 2 v square. So, 3 v square by 2 and if you look at the options, the option 1 matches with our solution. So, option 1 is correct. It is time now to go to question number 10.